I feel very motivated by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and his efforts to make people um, realize how important compassion is. Compassion and bringing people into this non-dual state of awareness, which is we can dissolve the boundaries between ourselves and others. We realize, and you see this so often with human dynamics in the workplace or in a professional setting, people are always competitive with each other. It's just sort of naturally set up that way in society that we compete, especially in the academic world. There's always competition and you're always competing for grants and such. But the goal here is that we're all going to work together to improve humanity. And how do we do that? He's always been an inspiration for me. And um, because as a meditation practitioner, of course, he's one of the um, great teachers of the Tibetan Vajrayana path. So I've had the opportunity to meet with him a bunch of times through my work with the Mind and Life Institute. But there was a specific time where um, I got to present my work to him with a number of emerging leaders in the field of contemplative science and mindfulness research and meditation research. And he said basically that he looked at us and there was sort of a turning, uh, changing of the guard. There's some people who did some of this work in the 70s and they're sort of moving in towards the retirement phase maybe, or just starting to look for legacy, um, leaving their legacy with newer generation of, of scientists who focus on meditation and mindsets and, you know, really better doing the rigorous work that needs to be done for the future. And he says, now you and your generation, he was talking to six of us um, that were in his presence, you and your generation have the responsibility to build a happy, peaceful world. It's hard for me to even say that, knowing that right now, Ukraine is being invaded uh, at this point, and there's a possibility for people to die in the context of war. But millions of people want a peaceful world. Um, they're just lacking the knowledge of how to do so, right? There's just these structures embedded in our world and in our society to compete with each other. But so few individuals show interest in actually doing the work. And he was telling us month by month, year by year, you will gain awareness about these things, how to bring more conviction to others' minds with evidence to convince others. And he said, he will watch us <laughs> and whether we are uh, really helping to build a happy, peaceful world or not. Uh, and then he was um, joking and he's good. He's a good joker. He says, I'll be, I'll watch from either hell or heaven. Uh, if from hell, there's not much I can do, but if you do the wrong things, I'll come as a demon with horns and hunt you down. <laughs> but he really was just pl being playful and saying that we, you should constantly check your own motivation. Uh, so I have been continually motivated, no matter which way I go, whether I stay in the academic path or work with others um, in the for-profit sector, or in the context of this new society that we're building, I really am just trying to use my neuroscience skills and my own meditation practice to help inform people about the science, the rigor of uh, in which we can say meditation can have a truly lasting impact uh, and help humanity in a positive way.